Good morning. Sorry, my computer didn't want to wake up this morning. We are on Daf Zayin Ahmed Aleph 7a. And um, about, we are the uh, seventh line in, the eighth line in. The, so the Gemara brought the Machlokes between uh, uh, the Rav uh, Sheshis uh, or Rav Nachman, really, it's Machlokes um, that is relevant, the Gemara brought it uh, beforehand. And this idea of um, whether or not we say Tuma Utru Betzibar or Tuma Duchuya Betzibar. We know that a communal carbon can be brought even in Tuma, even though that obviously something in the base of Mikdash is not allowed to be brought the Tuma. You can't bring a carbon if the animal itself is tummy or if the coin is tummy. Uh, however, uh, in regards to a uh, in, in regards to um, a communal carbon, a betzibur, so then to mahutra that it, it, that is allowed. And the question is, is it a hutra completely permissible to the degree that I don't even have to try to avoid it, um, and uh, there is no effort needed because the prohibition is suspended. There is no iser. There is no problem of Tuma at all. Or do we say Tuma Duchuya Betzibur? That the mitzvah supersedes the Tuma, but the Tuma is still there. And so if we can avoid it, we would. And we uh, brought this in the relevance uh, um, to the uh, Mishnah, where the Mishnah says that um, uh, we separate the coin for seven days. And we said that the reason was well, we were afraid that the coin may have a uh, a Tumas Nida. So that's why uh, we learn it from Miluim or from Moshe on the, on the mountain. However, um, the concern and the reason why his wife wouldn't come along is because we have the concern of a, a, a Tumas Aguf, which would be prohibited for him to then uh, bring the carbon, uh, do the Avoida, do his service that way with a Tuma that comes from the body. What we have is, uh, the, uh, however, that there's no concern of a Tumas Mace. That that somehow somebody will die near him, and so uh, 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 Rava said, "From here we can deduce that tuma hutra uh, the 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 communal carbon being allowed to be brought with the tuma, uh, even in tuma, if it's not a tuma that comes from the from the one's own body, from the goof, but rather from uh, something external like a dead person, that would be considered a uh, um, a completely permissible." Uh, carbon, and therefore we don't have to try and avoid it and say, don't, ha- don't have people come into your room, because maybe someone's going to die, and then you're going to have a tumor. So the Gemara rejected that and said, no, maybe the reason over there is simply because uh, that's not a common occurrence. We don't have to, we don't have to take a precaution for that. Um, in, in any case, but the machlokis is a basic machlokis between Rav Sheshis and Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman says, tumor, ultra and that the tumah is completely permissible. There is no prohibition uh, at all. Whereas uh, Rav Shesha says, no, there is a prohibition. And uh, the, it, we have to avoid it if we could. It, it's just that the Torah permitted or the mitzvah supersedes that prohibition. And therefore, whatever you can do to, to minimize the, the tumah, uh, 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 you, you would. And so we brought, yes, we brought a, a, a proof from the fact that someone who was bring, the coin that was bringing the Omer offering, if it became Tomei, he would, um, uh, we, we would ask if there's any more grain, and then he would bring it. And if not, we just keep quiet about it. Now, why would you have to, uh, um, we understand keeping quiet about it because too much of it's evil, because it's permissible. But why would you try and bring the other grains? After all, if you're right, Rav Nachman, that too much, that is completely permissible. So then just ignore it. Who cares? It's totally permissible. To which Rav Nachman says, no, there is a distinction. Because in, in that mincha, there is a part that gets eaten by the coin. The one fistful goes into Mizbeach, and the rest, the remainder, the shirayim, that, gets, that, that goes um, uh, to the coin uh, to be eaten. So uh, if it's Tomei, that's going to be lost. So there's an additional reason to want to try and avoid bringing the carbon and tumah. 
not because it's not kosher that way, not because it's prohibited that way, but because you lose the additional part, which is that the Kohanim get to eat the rest of it as a part of the mitzvah. So now the Gemara is going to ask a similar question of where the, we seek to try and bring the carbon, uh, a, a, a replacement for the carbon, but Tahara, if available, and these are talking about carbonus uh, um, offerings, that, that there is nothing eaten. It all goes on the Mizbeach. So you can't answer of Nachman's reason because part of it's eaten. It seems like we're saying the same thing, that we're going to try and seek and find an alternative rather than bringing it in, in Betuma, even though that it all goes on the Mizbeach. Mesa, Mesa, we ask a question. And this is, again, on Zion, Amad Aleph, 7a, eight lines from the bottom, second line, from the top, second line word, uh, in, second word in. Mesa, Mesa. And we ask a question. He was bringing a mincha offering that comes along with bulls, rams, or sheep. Now, the carbon that usually comes along, the meal offering that comes along with the carbon is usually called a carbon minchas nesachim, the mincha that comes along with libations, and it all goes on the mezbeach. And so we can't assume the answer that the Rabbi Nachman, uh, uh, that Rav Nachman had said before, which is that the re- the reason why we're trying to seek an alternative to the tummy carbon is in order to to have it available to be eaten by the Kohanim. Says no, uh, that that wouldn't apply here because it all goes on the mizbeach. So there, the, in this mincha as well, we learn that nit mizbeyada. If it became tummy while in his hand, meaning the coins working with it, Omer, he tells someone, and they'll bring an, uh, an, a replacement in its place. However, if you cannot find, in other words, there is no other carbon for him. Elahi, this is the only one that he can use. Be wise and sp- don't speak about it, since it's a communal carbon, and, and uh, the the uh, assumption at this point is that. Um, it's a uh, communal carbon. The time is set, meaning it, it is a manakavu. It has a particular time has to be brought, and it, it, it comes along with a mincha along with the libations, and that is going to supersede the, the tuma, um, and you're going to be permissible to bring it. And so, be quiet about it. My love, and what kind of bulls, rams, and and uh, 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 sheep are we talking about? They bring this carbon. Wouldn't you say the Chag, my love, part of Elam Kavosim, the Chag, it's the the Sukkis uh, Karbanas, like the, the special Karbanas for Sukkis. And um, they go entirely up on the Mizbeach, so nobody eats from it. And yet, and yet, um, he's looking for an alternative rather than bringing the Karban in Tuma. And Tuma says, okay, if you can't find anything else, then be quiet about it. But you, Rav Nachman, you say Tumahotu Betzibur, it's as permissible as the other one. So why are you even seeking a replacement? Amalachar Rav Nachman. So Rav Nachman says, Loi. No, that's not what it means. It's not the bulls, uh, rams, and, and, and sheep of the, of the Yantav carbon, and they're essentially one, one set. But rather, we're talking about general terms. Bulls, whatever they're appropriate, and that would be Parim, Paravidizara. It's the bull of a communal sin offering if the entire community is served over the Zara. As, uh, this, uh, this idea is that if the, the, um, uh, one of the, the leaders of the community said that this is a permissible thing and people uh, thought it's permissible and followed, and, and then and it turns out that it was a prohibited over the Zara prohibition that um, they, they uh, bring a bull as a, a, an atonement for the community. Even though it's a communal obligation, since it doesn't have a set time, Mahadrina. So therefore, it is permissible. But since it's not, uh, uh, it's not the same as as uh, a Shabbos communal offering, a Pesach communal offering, a Sukkot communal offering, which uh, the Omer, which these are communal carbonos uh, uh, that have a set time, and therefore it's totally permissible. Whereas this, this, even though it's a communal carbon, but it doesn't have a set time, uh, therefore, Mahadrinan, you see, try and seek out an alternative 
And it's only if you don't have an alternative that you'll bring it. And what rams are we talking about? Elim, Elo Shekha and Godel, Shalara. This is the ram of, uh, of uh, Aharon that he brings on Yom Kippur. The Alpha Gab the Kvil is man, which does have obviously set time. It's Yom Kippur, given the Yachidu. It's actually a, a personal carbon. Uh, Mahadrina, so he seeks out a, 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 um, uh, uh, um, uh, an alternative. And if he can't find the alternative, that's when he's going to bring it to him. Now, obviously, we, we're going to run into a problem here because we said that only communal carbonas are allowed to be brought in Tuma, a personal carbon cannot. And here you're saying Aaron's personal carbon, his own, his, his atonement, his personal carbon um, uh, is um, uh, the, the is is going to be brought over here, uh, even though that the communal carbon is not allowed to be brought in Tuma. So the, uh, over here we're going to say that, well, it, it's it's a unique situation. Because since it's a part of the the Yom Kippur um, avoda, um, and it is a communal carbon, it, meaning it's his personal carbon for him to be able to do the communal service. If it, this is missing, he's not going to be able to do the communal service either. So in that aspect, it's a communal carbon. It's a set time. It'll supersede Shabbos. It'll be uh, tuma as well. It'll supersede the tuma as well. However. The concept that Rav Nachman says that Tuma that the pro, that the prohibition doesn't doesn't apply here because it's a communal carbon that would not apply to this case. The Tuma applies, and and the Tuma will supersede the mitzvah of the day will supersede the Tuma, and so uh, it, this is a, a sort of an in between carbon. It's not a it's not on behalf of the community. So it's not a communal carbon in the sense that Rav Nachman is going to say there is no prohibition of tumah at all. It doesn't. It wasn't said in this scenario. It's completely permissible. No, this is actually a personal carbon for Ara. However, he cannot do the communal uh, uh, carbon without it, and therefore we need. Uh, uh, it's, uh, therefore, it needs to be done. It can be done even on Shabbos, meaning the mitzvah will supersede Shabbos, and the mitzvah will even supersede tumah. But the prohibition of tumah is there. It's there, and the a mitzvah will supersede it. And that's, uh, O'Hare Rav Nachman will agree that it is a, a, a dechuya. We're just going to push aside the prohibition, but it's still there, and, and we need to avoid it if you can. So this is a, 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 a um, sort of in between. It's not a personal carbon that somebody will just bring on a regular day, or even the coin will bring on a regular day. It's a communal, it's a communal carbon in the sense of that the coin must bring it in order to do the rest of the communal service of Yom Kippur, the Avoid of Yom Kippur. However, it's his personal carbon. The Afo Gab the Kvil is man, even though that it's set time, keeping the Yacharu Madrina, since it's a personal carbon, we do seek an alternative rather than bringing it into it. And Kvasim, what lambs are we talking about? The Kevas Abay Ma'emer. This is the lamb. It is a communal carbon. It's the lamb that comes along with the Omer offering. And, the, and, and this lamb actually is eaten by the Kahanim as well. So the Ika Shiraim Lachila, just like the meal offering, so to the lamb, the, the Omer Mincha and the, and the Omer Keves, the lamb are both um, parts go on the Mizbeach, parts are eaten, and therefore we're going to try and seek out a kosher one, a, a, to, a tohar one, not tame for the sake of the mitzvah of eating the rest of it. So uh, again, we, uh, the, we had a question on Rav Nachman, and we, uh, Rav Nachman was able to explain the Mishnah and this halacha this, uh, uh, in regards to, it's actually a brisa, in, in regards to uh, other karbanas. Basically, we ask a question. Dam shenitma v'zorka. You have the blood that was that became the became tummy. So it's a part of the carbon. It has to be spritzed on the mizbeach, and the blood itself became became tummy, and he spritzed it on the mizbeach. And, 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 and nevertheless, b'shoigig purza. If he did so in b'shoigig, it became a valid. Uh, it, it, um, it's validated. Purza means it's accepted willingly. 
meaning that that the it's a valid carbon. However, if he did so intentionally, that he knowingly that it was Tame spritz the blood on the Mizbeh, it's going to be um, it's not going to be accepted. And um, and and this is a rabbinic uh, a rabbinic uh, uh, um, punitive action against him for for intentionally spritzing tummy blood on the mizbeach, but really the carbon should be valid. Um, and the uh, the reason for that is because as we're about to see, the tzitz, the golden plate that the kohen wore on his forehead that had Hashem's name on it, the Torah says that this was brought so that when a um, uh, when uh, a carbon is brought uh, incorrectly uh, in sin, it's going to be validated. And this is the, the uh, we'll see soon, the Gemara says, the Pasuk says, Aaron will carry or atone for the sin of the Kachim, of the holy. And we'll see what that means. In any case, so this really should be valid. And the, the Chachamim enacted a, a, an invalidation on account of him doing so intentionally. And even though the carbon works for the owner, for the person who brought the carbon, the Kahanim may not eat it um, as a result of the blood being spritzed intentionally while tummy. Um, in any case, uh, the Gemara used this as a question to say, well, why would we, why would we um, create such a, a punitive punishment on the Kahanim for bringing it intentionally while tummy? Hutra, it's totally permissible while tummy. <coughs> so who cares that it's tummy? Um, and 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 you, we're going to punish you for for spritzing the tummy blood on the mizbech. It's permissible. A, it's there is no prohibition of tuma according to Yerav Nachman. According to Rav Sheshes, it makes sense that really we we try and avoid that. Uh, so so if you did so intentionally. It, um, there's there there's a, a punishment for it. So the Gemara says, "Kitan Yahim the Yachid." The Gemara says, "Who tells you that's talking about a communal carbon? Maybe that's talking about an individual carbon." And everybody agrees you're not allowed to bring it in Tuma. Tashima. So we're going to try and prove it from here. Al Mahat Sitz Maratza. What does the Sitz atone for and make a carbon valid? Al Hadam about blood, vala basar in the meat, vala chelav in the fats, shenitma, that became tummy. Regardless, bein b'shoigig, bein b'mezid, inadvertently or intentionally, bein b'anis, bein b'ratzen, against one's will or freely, bein b'yachid, bein b'tzibar, regardless if it's in communal carbon, individual carbon or communal carbon, either way, it atones for that. Now, v'isak, that of tumah heterhi. Now, if you're going to tell me that tuma is permissible, uh, in a communal carbon, in a communal in the communal carbon, there is no prohibition of tuma. So what I need the tzitz to atone for and make it valid, there is nothing to atone for. It's totally permissible. Now I understand the corridor of Sheshas, even though that you're allowed to bring the carbon because it supersedes, there is still a prohibition in place that that the mitzvah is superseding the prohibition of bringing in tuma. And so we're going to bring it because that overpowers it, but that doesn't mean that there is no problem in bringing in the tuma. So we can understand that the tzitz atones for it. But according to you, Reb, uh, Reb, uh, Reb Nachman, that the 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 uh, prohibition is 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 not there anymore in a communal carbon. There is no prohibition of tuma. So what I need an atonement for from the tzitz? In a communal carbon, what I need the the tzitz to to make it better, to make it acceptable. Rav Nachman says you're right. It's only talking about the the individual uh, private carbonus, not the communal carbon. Or the iba yisema afil tamer mitzibur. Or we could say that the tzitz does atone for communal carbon. As we said before, it's about a carbon that doesn't have a set time, such as a communal atonement carbon, which doesn't have a set time. Obviously, you shouldn't have to bring it. It's only if the communal sin is there so that it needs to be brought. And so uh, uh, that uh, communal carbon, which doesn't have a set time, if the if the uh, carbon is tummy and the coin brings it anyhow, the tits will atone. Mesevic. So we ask a question from, uh, again, from this idea of the tits. It says in the Pasuk that Aharon 
in, in wearing the tzitz, he's, that will carry the sin of the kachim of the, uh, uh, of the uh, karbonus. Now, so which sin is he going to carry? Imavon pigul. Is it talking about the sin of pigul? Which, you know, pigul is the intention that a person has at the time of the carbon. He has to have the intention to eat it within the right amount of time. So if it's a carbon that's a one day carbon, that he will eat it by, by the end of, uh, uh, before the next morning. If it is a, uh, a shlamim type carbon, which is a day and a half or two days and a night in between. So he has to have intention to finish the carbon by the next evening before uh, um, night comes. <clears throat> and uh, if he intends beyond that, so that's going to be a, an invalidation. So if it actually goes beyond that, it's no sir, it's leftovers. And if he intends that he's going to leave it beyond that, so it, then the carbon is invalidated as he intended to make no sir. It also has to be eaten in a specific place, either in the base of Mikdash itself, in the Azara, in the courtyard, if it is a Kache uh, Kachim, uh, uh, holy holies. And uh, anywhere in Yerushalayim, if it is a Kachim uh, Kalim, minor Kachim. In any case, each carbon has its rules of where it's eaten and how it's eaten and when it's eaten. And if he intends to eat it outside of that place that he's allowed to eat it, so even, uh, of course, if he takes it out, it's going to be invalidated. But even just the intent during the four avoidas, the Shrita, Kabbalah, Halacha, and Zrika, the Shechting, the receiving of the blood, the bringing of the blood to the Mizbech, and the spritzing of the blood, in, within, while doing those four services, if he intends that he's going to eat it outside of the uh, uh, of Yerushalayim, or the owner is going to eat it outside of where it's supposed to be eaten, then the uh, um, the uh, Allah is it's pigul. It's invalidated in a very severe invalidation called pigul. And anybody that eats that carbon afterwards, it's kares. The soul is cut off from its source. It's a very severe thing. So we so is it atoning for that? No, that can't be. By pigul, it says in the Torah. Pigul who le'iratzeh. It is pigul. It will not be accepted. Ve'im oven noiser. And if it's about the leftovers, harek vanema le'yichashiv. It also says it will not be um, in, in, accepted. Yichashiv meaning it won't, won't be considered uh, uh, important or valid. So in both of these, we already know that the the, the tzitz does not validate it because the Torah says it's not going to be valid. Now we're on Zion Amid Beis. Ha ena noiser elav in tuma. So. Uh, it must be that it'll carry, what does it carry? It carries the sin of Tumah. Shohutra mechlala betzibur. Since we do find that in communal karva, the, the, uh, um, that Tumah actually is made permissible from its prohibition, meaning the Torah has a general prohibition, a klal, the general prohibition of Tumah in carbon, that you can't bring a carbon while the carbon is tummy, the coin is tummy, and, and, and in a communal carbon, there is a hutra that the Torah uh, um, ex, uh, um, excluded or extracted it from that pro- prohibition and, and made an exemption or a, 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 a exclusion in this mitzvah that the communal carbon is going to be allowed to be brought in Tuma. And therefore, the tzitz atones for that. The kashel of Sheshes. So that's a, con- a contradiction to Rav Sheshes. Because Rav Shesha says that that Tuma that the communal carbon is still has a prohibition of Tuma, and here the Brisa says Shohutra that is totally made permissible uh, in regards to communal carbon, and therefore in regards to private carbon, the tzitz atones for it. So therefore, even a, commu- a, a private person's carbon, an individual's carbon, is also going to be atoned for, even though he's not supposed to bring it, it'll atone for it if he brought it. And, we, and, and it's on the basis of that the communal carbon is, is permissible. Mikashi Rav Sheshis. So the number of Sheshis says, you're right. I'm going to have to admit that there are two opinions in the Brisa. And I follow the opinion that says that it's only set aside, it only supersedes, but not that, uh, that, that the carbon supersedes the tumma, but not that the tumma is completely not a problem at all.
Tanoi, so it's Machlek as the Tanoi, the Tani we learn. Sits the, the, the golden plate that sits of, of the Kohen, Gadol, that he wears. Bein sheyeshna ha mitzvah, bein sheyena ha mitzvah meratza. Divir Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon says that whether the Kohen Gadol is wearing the tits or not, if we have an invalid carbon, a tummy carbon that was brought anyhow, as we saw before, inadvertently, the tits will atone for it. So even Minatora, even if it's done intentionally, as we said, that, that really it works regardless of whether the coin did intentionally or not, but, um, the, but the Chachamim don't let them eat the carbon if, if it was done intentionally. Either way, it's talking about, um, Rabbi Shimon says, regardless of whether the coin Gadol is in service, meaning he's on the, uh, in the base of Mikdash wearing the garments that sits on his forehead, it's going to atone. Just the concept of the tzitz essentially is what atones. Different Rabbi Shimon. That's Rabbi Shimon's opinion. Rabbi Yehuda, however, Rabbi Yehuda says no. Only while the, the, the tzitz is on his forehead does it atone. While it's on his forehead. However, it's not on his forehead. It's not going to atone. So meaning that uh, uh, the, the, um, t- if the Kohen Gadol happens not to be on the floor that day, he happens not to be at that moment wearing the tzitz, be, uh, because he stepped out, and that's when this carbon was brought in Tuma. It's going to be a, an individual's carbon. Brought in Tuma, it's, it's going to be an invalid carbon that it's only atones and it only uh, validates a carbon while the Kohen Gadol is wearing it. I'm a little Rabbi Shimon. So Rabbi Shimon said, wait, I can prove it to you. Kohen Gadol be Yom the Kohen Gadol on Yom Kippur. What's the rule with the Kohen Gadol on Yom Kippur? We've, we're going to see more about this later, but we know that the Kohen Gadol would switch off between his eight garments of which there's gold in there. They, so we call that the golden garments. It's the eight garments that he usually wears. It has the tits, the golden plate uh, on his forehead, the choshen, the breastplate, which has gold in it. Uh, the, the garments also have gold threads in them. And, and uh, it's the colorful garments that the Kohen Gadol would wear. However, he would switch out into the plain white linen garments, four linen garments, uh, similar to uh, the, what, the, what the regular Kohen would wear, and go into the Holy of Holies that way. So at some point in the Avodah Yom Kippur, he's not wearing the tzitz because he has to take it off. He's, he's not wearing the gold garments. He's wearing only the four uh, white garments. So the Kohen Gadol Yom Kippur, that it's not, uh, he's not wearing it. Um, when he goes into the inner, uh, the Kodesh HaKadoshim, um, and, and, and yet, the, um, uh, if, the, if something happens to the carbon that it became tummy, it's going to be a valid carbon nevertheless. So we see that the tzitz will atone for and make the carbon valid, even if the Kohen Gadol is not wearing it at that very moment. I'm a of Yudah, so what are you talking about? Hanach Kohen Gadol no, that's a communal carbon. Yom Kippur. You bring me a proof from Yom Kippur that the Kohen Gadol is not wearing his, 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 his tzitz, and yet it's a valid carbon? Of course, Yom Kippur is a communal carbon. Even the individual carbon of Aharon earlier, we said, is, uh, is in a sense ruled as a communal carbon on account of that as a set time, and the communal carbon is dependent on him bringing that. And so it, it counts as a communal carbon. Uh, for sure, the communal carbon is that they... Which are which are to atone for the community and are an obligation of the community for sure. Tuma hutra betzibur. There, the 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 tuma is totally permissible uh, uh, as a communal carbon. So Rabbi Yehuda says, no, that you can't bring me proof from the from the communal carbon. The communal carbon, there is no tuma prohibition at all. It's hutra. This is what Rav Nachman had been saying the whole time. Rav Nachman being several generations after. Uh, 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 Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon. So he, Rabbi Nachman is essentially uh, 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 voicing Rabbi Yehuda's opinion and saying, well, what Rabbi Yehuda says here, uh, the, the communal carbon, it's not that there's a prohibition of Tumah and, uh, and it's just that because we have a communal mitzvah that supersedes the prohibition of Tumah. No, it's t- completely hutra. And I don't need the tzitz to atone for it on Yom Kippur because it is entirely not a problem to have Tumah on a commu- in a communal carbon. Now, but Rabbi Shimon, who, uh, who, who disagreed 
and try to bring proof from the fact that the Kohen Gadol's uh, 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 that is not wearing the tzitz on Yom Kippur, and yet the communal carbon is going to be atoned for for uh, and accepted in Tuma Michlal, so we can deduce from that the Rav Shimon Sava Tuma He must be of the opinion that actually the prohibition of Tuma is in place, and there is a problem, and I need the use. I need the value of the tzitz to atone for that. However, we're going to bring it in a communal carbon because. Tuma the 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 the, uh, the uh, mitzvah of the community supersedes is docha sets aside the tuma, but the tuma is a, still a problem. It's a prohibition intact and in place, and therefore the we need the tzitz atonement, and we're going to see that the tzitz atones even if the kohen gadol is not wearing it. So that machlokas over there of whether the kohen gadol uh, uh, the tzitz atones for a carbon even when the kohen gadol is not wearing it, or only if he's wearing it. And Rabbi Shimon's proof from Kohen Gadol, uh, from the Kohen Gadol on Yom Kippur, where he's not wearing the tzitz all the day, all day. Part of the time he's not wearing it, and yet it atones. So we see Rabbi Shimon says it needs atonement, even though it's a communal carbon. It needs atonement because it, the 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 uh, prohibition of tuma, uh, bringing carbon tuma, is intact. It's just that the mitzvah supersedes that as a communal carbon. It supersedes the prohibition. And therefore, we see that it's only dechuya, according to Rabbi Shimon, the, that it only supersedes the prohibition, but the prohibition is still there. And therefore, we're going to try and do whatever we can to avoid it. Whereas Rabbi Yehuda's response very clearly states, well, you can't bring me proof from a communal carbon. Of course, the Kohen Gadol is not wearing the, the, the uh, tzitz on Yom Kippur, uh, but it's a communal carbon that, it, it, it's a communal carbon that, that uh, uh, it has no prohibition of Tumah. And that's why, even though the Kohen Gadol is not wearing its sits, it's going to work because it's communal carbon. And so we see that the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda is that Tumud Hutra B'tzibar is completely made permissible. And so Rav Shesha says, you're right, that you find a brisa that says the words Hutra, that the Tuma is completely permissible in communal carbon. That's Rabbi Yehuda's opinion. And I follow Rabbi Shimon. Okay, now that uh, we, we've established that there is indeed a machlokes, uh, between Tanaim already, whether or not Tumod Chuyah B'tzibur or Hutra B'tzibur, whether it's completely permissible or not. We proved it from the halachas of the tzitz uh, um, from, and the conversation between Rabbi Yudah and Roshim and around that. So now the Gemara is going to get into more about the tzitz. And we, we uh, saw the machlokes of Rabbi Yudah and Roshim in here. Does the tzitz have to be in, on the, uh, being worn currently by the Kohen Gadol? Or do we say, no, it doesn't have to be that he's wearing it as long as the concept of the tzitz is there, meaning that the, the, the Kohen Gadol is, is available. Even if he's not wearing it, it's going to be okay and atone for the Tuma uh, Karma. Amar Abai. Sabai says, Benishbar Hatzitz. What about if, it, if the tzitz actually breaks? It's a golden plate. It has Hashem's name. Uh, and and uh, the Kohen Gadol hangs it up, right? And he, 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 he's, he's no longer doing the service right now. He goes out, so he takes off his special Kohen Gadol garments, and he takes off the tzitz. Rabbi Yehuda says, it doesn't atone. Rabbi Shimon says, it does atone. What about if it actually broke? It's not that he just happens not to be wearing it. It's actually not available. It's broken. They have to make a new one. Nishbar at the Kula Amalai Pligi the Lemaratza. Abai says in that case, everybody agrees it's not going to atone for a carbon brought in Tuma and not going to validate the carbon. Ki Pligi the Talibisichta. And the Machlekas is only in when the Kohen Gadol happens not to be wearing it, he hung it up on its, you know, in its place on its hook. Rabbi Yudha Sava, Rabbi Yudha Sava, the opinion, Al Metzach Venosa, it says in the Pasuk uh, 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 in regards to the Kohen Gadol wearing the tzitz and it atoning. So it says, it shall be on um, the forehead of Aharon, and, he, and Aharon will carry the sin of the Kachim. So if it's on its forehead, he learns the understanding um, uh, 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 that it's uh, while it's on its al metzach, it'll be on the forehead of Aharon, and then Vanasa, and then he can carry the sin, meaning it'll atone for the sin of Kachim, of the Tumah, and, uh, and validate the carbon. However, Rabbi Shimon, Savar, Rabbi Shimon says, the, the end of that verse says, um, 
it'll atone, it says Aram will atone for the sin of Kachim, which Bnei Yisrael bring, all of their gifts, and it shall be on his forehead, Tamid, always, Leratzon, as acceptance, Lehem for them, Lefnei Hashem before Hashem. There are two ways to read that. Where are we going to put that, uh, that, that comma? It can be, and it could be read like this. It'll be on his forehead. Always a, 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 an acceptance for them before Hashem. Or it can be read this way. It'll always be on his forehead. As an atonement or as an acceptance for them before for Hashem. So that word Latamid is in between, and it can be referring to above the the uh, the words beforehand, which is, and it shall be on his forehead always, or it can be on below, it shall be on his forehead, comma, always as an acceptance before Hashem. So Rav Shimon, Rabbi Shimon says, the end of that Pasuk, you read it like this, Tamid L'Ratzel L'Fnei Hashem. He, Savar, he says that you read it as always on, as an acceptance before Hashem, meaning my tummy. What does this mean? Always. It doesn't mean, is it referring to before, always on his forehead? He said, you can't read it that way. Do we find that the Kayin Gadol always wears, um, uh, uh, always wears the, the, the uh, tzitz? No. As we're talking about, he, he's allowed to take it off. He doesn't sleep with it, shower with it, etc. He takes it off. In fact, even in a part of the Avodah Yom Kippur, he's going to take it off. So, Tamir al Mitzvah cannot mean that it's always on his forehead. So, that alternate, the, the, the other reading where the comma is going to be after always, and it means al Mitzvah Tamir, it's always on his forehead, is, is not tenable because we have we know that the Kohen Gadol actually takes it off. Mile Bayi Meila Besakisi doesn't have to go to the bathroom. Mile Bayi Meinam doesn't have to sleep. So, of course, the Kohen Gadol is not always going to wear it. It, the Gemara it, it uses these examples, but we just mentioned a few moments ago, he takes it off as a part of the Avodah on Yom Kippur. So it can't be always. So rather the Tamid must be going on the end of the Pasuk. And the comma goes before Tamid. Al Mitzchad, it shall be on his forehead, comma, Tamid Loratzen, and then it'll always be an atonement. If it's on his forehead, when appropriate, so then it'll always be an atonement for for uh, 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 an acceptance of the of the carbonus and the Bnei Yisro in front of Hashem. So um, the the Rabbi Shimon says the end of the pasuk must mean that it is always going to atone even if he's not wearing it. Or Rabbi Yehuda Nami. So now we have a question according to Rabbi Yehuda. Haksiv Tamit. It says it's always an atonement. Hahu Tamit shali yisiach daitem imen. The, he learns that the idea of Tamid over there is Vahaya Mitzvah Tamid, meaning while it's on his forehead, he must always be aware, think about it, that this is a, 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 something that's, uh, that's um, uh, um, uh, a relationship with Hashem, and it's there to um, uh, bring that awareness on his mind, on his forehead, on his thoughts, that he is in, in that, uh, um, like the Pasuk, like David Melech says in the Pasuk, Shivisi Hashem Lenegdi Saman, I place Hashem before me always. So this is the consciousness, the awareness of the mind. And that's what Tamid over there means, that to always be aware. And that's the, of course, he doesn't have to wear it at every moment, but it has to always be on his mind. It always has to be that consciousness. That's what Tamid over there means. Could the Rabbi Baravuna, like Rabbi Baravuna said in regards to the Allah of Tefillin, the Amar Rabbi. Baravuna, Rabbi Baravuna said, Chayev Adam Lamashmesh Tefila Bachal Shavasha. A person has to constantly go back to feel his tefillin to re, uh, uh, refocus the awareness that we have the tefillin, which says Shema Yisrael and Bahavta and the, in the mitzvahs of Hashem the, on our mind and on our actions, our heart and uh, uh, on our mind and on our arm, which represents action and heart, which is desire. That it will constantly in focus with Hashem. So it, 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 the the you know it doesn't mean constantly touch it, but it means on a regular basis feel your tefillin to reignite that awake that that the the intention of tefillin, which is the awareness and the and the mindfulness. So kavachomer mitzitz, and he learns that you have to do this for tefillin as a kavachomer from from tzitz. 
and now we're aches amad aleph at the top. Just one more line. Umatzit she'im bayel as kara aches tzitz, which only has Hashem's name once. Amra Torah mitzvah tamid. The Torah says it has to be on his forehead always, meaning he constantly has to have the consciousness of it. Shelo yesiach daitim and he should not take his mind off it to fill it. To fill in she yesh ba as kara is v'harbe has many mentions of Hashem's name. Al aches kama v'kama much more so. So tomorrow we'll continue with this machlokas between Rabbi Yudah and Rabbi Shimon, whether the tzitz atones even when not being worn, and the meaning of the Pasuk of Tamit, and the consciousness that it requires in tefillin and, and tzitz.